name is Justin Rhodes, and I study behavioral neuroscience. We've chosen a, a model organism that shows a very dramatic example of social environment having a long-lasting impact on the behavior and physiology of the organism as a model system to understand how the brain orchestrates this. And these are clownfish, which change sex depending on the social environment. We have clownfish paired off in 26 tanks. One male, one female, and maybe a couple of, of, of other smaller, undifferentiated fish living on sea anemones. And the larger one is always female, dominant. And this, the second in the hierarchy is the male. And if you remove the female, then the male will change sex and become a female in a matter of a couple of months. And basically, this is through the brain interpreting this social change. The clownfish has both testicular tissue and ovarian tissue. And so it's a matter of just encouraging one of the other tissues to develop. It's unclear exactly what signals they're using, probably mostly vision, and maybe some olfaction, and maybe even sound. And then that probably communicates to the hypothalamus in the areas of the brain that we know communicate to the pituitary gland, which is a little gland right below the brain, which releases hormones into the blood, which communicate to the gonads, causing testes to absorb and ovaries to develop and morphology to change and completely reverse the behaviors because this used to be a male and now it's dominant and behaving like a female and so on. One hypothesis is that a sex change will involve some reorganization of the brain and we can measure and track when we remove the female and observe what changes take place in the brain of that male changing sex into female we can see what areas of the brain are sprouting new neurons or what areas of the brain are removing new neurons. We can discover then how in this one dramatic example of how the social environment reorganizes behavior and presumably makes some inferences. The two human implications potentially are humans also have a similar, you know, they don't change sex, but social environment can have long lasting effects on their behavior personality. Presumably this involves similar biology. Another potential implication of this work is identifying changes in the brain that apparently are necessary to function as a female versus a male. If you measure male and female brains, you see differences. The question is, which of those differences are functional? What are the neuroanatomical or physiological differences between a male and a female brain that makes males behave like males and females behave like females? Difficult to know when you compare males and females in, in different species. But in a sex-changing fish, presumably those changes that are actually undergoing reorganization, new neurons sprouting up in one area, neurons degrading in another area, those are most likely to be functional because that's going to be very energetically costly to the animal to start rearranging the brain and, and in connections and so on. I mean, think about what's happening here. The fish is just detecting sensory, a change in the social environment, and somehow that's affecting basically the, the, the whole, the testes to be changed, ovaries to develop, the animals to get larger, their behavior to change, genitalia is changing. So this is a really remarkable example of how your experience, your social experience, can have long lasting effects on your behavior and personality and morphology really, anatomy in this species. <laughs>